Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking a little bit on how to win as the yellow sign, the uh, devious faction led by Hastur in Cthulhu Wars. Okay, let's get into it. So the yellow sign is one of the most complicated factions in the in the base box. Um, it's also my favorite faction out of the base box, though the Crawling Chaos is pretty awesome too. Okay, I don't know if I have a favorite. I like all of them, um, except the Black Goat. Let's talk a little bit about what the yellow sign is. So the yellow sign, they're not bruisers. Um, they... They play very differently, and that can cause new players to really get frustrated because, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like sometimes they get distracted by the goals, right? If you don't know how to play, you may just default to, what do the spell books tell me to do? And so what do they have to do? Well, one, they have two ancient ones. So just like most of the factions, they have two spell books that... Um, that come from from successfully bringing in their ancient ones. So Awaken the King in Yellow gives them a, a spell book, and also Awaken Hastur, right? Uh, King in Yellow, Hastur, he should not who he who shall not be named, one of the scariest um, goos as they call them in uh, Cthulhu Wars. Uh, you you get you don't get two elder signs like right most of the factions you get an elder sign when you summon their ancient one the uh the yellow sign only gets one elder sign all right so then you have this successfully desecrate an area marked with these glyphs so you can see on all the different maps uh these symbols and so we can see that uh the Americas have sort of a, a swirling snake symbol. Um, Africa and Australia have these arrows. And uh, the rest of the world has these uh, sort of claws or teeth marks. So that's uh, Europe, Scandinavia, North Asia, Arabia, and South Asia. And as the yellow sign your goal is to desecrate, place at least one desecrate token in each of these different places. So <laughs> that, uh, I, I feel like that makes it so that yellow sign, they can't just win, right? You can't, you couldn't just conquer this corner as uh, as Cthulhu and just get more doom points than everybody else. No, 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 no. Yellow sign, they have to wander around and they have to desecrate these things. And in, I think especially with new games, it can make yellow sign kind of feel like they're just doing their own thing, but also they're not doing much because they just kind of putter around and... The other factions, they don't care that much about them because they know that while Black Goat and Great Cthulhu or Carl and Chaos, they're like doing their things like fighting each other. Yellow Sign, you can effectively block them, right? Uh, you could, if, if, you can, if you can dominate the Americas, you can basically prevent Yellow Sign from ever winning, you can just say, nope, I'm going to put all my defenses there, and they can't ever go in there, and if they can't desecrate it, they can't get their last, cell, last spell book, and that sucks pretty hardcore. Um, but that's why as Yellow Sign, like, you, you can't let that happen. And that means that you have kind of a time frame where you have to go out and desecrate things fast enough. So... All right, let's talk a little bit about the units. Uh, they're acolytes, nothing too special. Um, we'll talk about the spellbooks in a moment. So 
Uh, you don't have to worry about the acolytes of yellow sign in, in the ways that maybe you would with black goats with frenzies or great Cthulhu turning them into uh, frog deep ones. Uh, nope, yellow sign cultists are just cultists. They just do their thing. Um, undead. So they have six of these undeads. And as a general rule, you do, like most of the factions, you want to keep at least one in your pool. You don't really want all of them out at any time because if you do, that takes away options. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. The undead are, are interesting. Actually, yellow sign in general is interesting because the rules say that the undead have as many combat dice as one less than how many you have. So uh, four, skele- uh, four undead have three battle dice and uh, three have two battle dice and so on. Uh, Meanwhile, the next, uh, actually the only other monster they have is the Biaki. So the Biaki have one more battle die than how many you have there. So I think that's pretty interesting, right? Because one Biaki is worth two battle dice. And... um, Two Biaki have three battle dice. So in some ways, it can feel like better to have the Biaki kind of split up. Because actually, uh, four Biaki in, in four different places, that's a total of eight battle dice. And uh, all of them together is only five battle dice. But their ability is mobility. So uh, if you get the right spell book, they can kind of appear anywhere on the map. And that's, that's pretty cool. Anyway... Uh, the yell sign, because their units are based around the number of monsters they have in any one place, they have, it seems like, a lot of them. But there's only two types, and, um, and they're really not that powerful. They're, there's some more like a surprise value to them. Than, than really anything. Also, they're ch- kind of cheap and just sort of pop out. If you're playing Yellow Sign right, you're getting free monsters regularly, which I think is part of why they're not powerful. So, okay, uh, let's talk about the Great Old Ones. So the first one, uh, this is the cheapest Great Old One in the game, as, as far as I know, the King in Yellow. So he only costs four power, and you, in order to summon him, you just have to have him in an area with no gate. So what does that look like? Well, typically, you know, your cultist is either going to go into North Atlantic, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but maybe you're trying to get to North America, um, or you're going to go to Scandinavia. And I think most players are going to go to Scandinavia for one power, and then they're going to summon King Yellow for four power. And that's... That's like the trademark yellow sign opening move. Ancient one, boom, you still have three power. So uh, that, of course, gave you a spell book. And uh, it's almost time to start talking about spell books. But uh, you're, you're immediately going to start doing stuff. And that's, and you have to. I mean, you really do have to. Three of the spell books come only from the king in yellow. So you have to have the king in yellow out, and if he dies, you have to resummon him. If you're not, you probably can't win. That's, um, that's how I think yellow signed players can kind of get beat up a little bit. The other players can assassinate him, and uh, if the yellow signed player doesn't know how to respond, that can, that can really suck. Um, yellow signed player might not play aggressively enough, uh, to get the desecrations, let's let's just talk about real quick like how how that works in general. So uh, let's let's go ahead and grab the first spellbook. Very first spellbook is usually the Screaming Dead. The Screaming Dead. It says action cost one. Move the king in yellow to an adjacent area. Right. Boom. Any undead in the same area can move with him for free. So if he had a little, you know, a bunch of groupies, yay, yellow king, 
King in yellow, we love you. So if he had an indent, they'd move with him. And uh, all for free. So that costs one power. Boom. Um, immediately after, you may take a second different action. You may not take he who is not to be named as your second action. So uh, yellow sign, again, they're, they're different, but, they're, but within themselves, they're consistently different. So the yellow sign has two spell books, which allow him to um, do a movement and then immediately do something else. So for yellow sign, uh, for example, if, if he moved there, that cost him one power, and now he could, if he wanted to, he could immediately desecrate. So uh, he desecrates, and you put down a token. Well, you hope. You, uh, you roll your die, and if you roll equal to or less than the number of creatures on the space, in this case it would be four, then uh, I rolled a two. So you get to desecrate the token. When you desecrate, if the roll, uh, okay, uh, you get to put a monster or cultist with a cost of two or less in the area. So, you know, you put maybe a Byaki. Now, this is the first place where a beginning yellow sign player may make a mistake. So here's the deal, right? You need, you really need a horde of undead with the yellow sign, with the king in yellow, in order to summon the desecrate tokens. So uh, this was a four and six chance. I rolled a two. It's pretty good odds, right? It's, it's above 50-50 odds. But if you don't have, especially in the beginning, a lot of, a lot of undead with him, you want to say skeletons, but they're more like mummies. Um, if, you, if you don't have a lot of undead, you can feel like, hey, I just put out a desecrate token. I want to put out more undead. Here's the problem. When you leave, which you're going to leave, right? I mean, he has to. You have, again, you have no choice but um, screaming dead again and take all your undead with you. You have no choice but to move on and desecrate more and more. And in order to do that, you take everything with you. But here's, here's the thing. The faction ability for yellow sign is plus one power for each area containing both a desecration token and one or more of your units. So you're meant to kind of leave these Biakis behind. I mean, I guess you could put undead, but why would you do that? Like, Biaki are more powerful by themselves. It's two combat dice as opposed to zero for a single undead. And Biaki later on have Shriek of the Bi Shriek of the Biaki, and that allows you to move any or all Biaki from their current areas to one selected area, regardless of distance. So, if you're playing a very aggressive yellow sign, then you could put Screaming Dead as your first. And then you could put Shriek of the Biaki. Um, you know, uh, you could give somebody else three Doom Points. That's an easy, easy spell book. Um, actually, for desecrating the Teeth Mark area, you could do Shriek of the, the Biaki. What, you know, whatever you want. Um, but that, that allows you now to summon the Biaki. Somebody tries to assassinate King in Yellow. They move in. In the, middle, the beginning to middle of the game, they're not going to be able to do free unlimited attacks, right? So uh, if you have the ability to Shriek of the Biaki, boom, pull them in. Now you've got more defenses. And everything in Call of Cthulhu is really not, not really what you do do, but really about what can you do. So... When your enemies know that if they try to kill your king in yellow, you're going to just summon your Biaki. Or you're going to, I guess you could leave. Um, it's kind of scary because of Screaming Dead. But um, really, they're not afraid of chasing you around. They're afraid of dying, right? So 
if they know you're going to do uh, Shri Kitabiyaki, or they know you're going to do uh, he, who sh- who, he Who Is Not To Be Named, Who Is Going to Attack With Cultists, never mind, that's not an option. It's really going to be uh, Shri Kitabiyaki. Now, that's kind of an aggressive play. It's, it is a defensive ability. In, in this case, it's also an offensive ability, right? Because you can just summon Biaki to any space on the map. But the important point is that every round, because you left a Biaki in the Desecration Token area, you're getting plus one power. It's vital. I mean, you need it. Okay? Um, all right. Let's keep going. So, Passion. This spellbook, when one or more of your cultists are eliminated by an enemy, gain one power. This is whether they're killed or captured, etc. I'm assuming etc. is meant to apply to like Yag Sothoth, who does, um, like, you know, other factions do weird things, um, or, or like dreams, right? Dreams isn't killed or captured, but eliminated, anything eliminated. One power. Well, I only do passion if if I think the enemy factions are being a little bit more aggressive, right? You kind of like, there's a tempo to the game. You just sort of watch your, your other players. If they're thinking about daring to attack King Yellow cultists, boom, uh, I'll just put passion out, give somebody three doom, to- three doom points. Um, whoever I'm going to badger the most say, Shabnigrath, the, the black goat, that's who I'll give three doom points because, uh, right, uh, I'd hate to lose by two doom points. So I just give it to whoever I'm going to focus on, which isn't always the same by the end of the game. Okay, so then a great power. I, I love this power. Um, I think this power is also not used as much as it should be. I've literally seen some people never use it. All right, it's called Zingaya. Action cost one. If undead are in an area with enemy acolyte cultists, transform one such cultist into an undead. So, you know, I I desecrated the, the teeth. Let's put it out, Zingaya. And let's say that I am over here probably desecrated North Atlantic, which of course means I have a Biaki. And next turn comes around and I'm like, okay, let us do it. Screaming dead, I need the little arrow, little Starfleet Federation symbol, West Africa. Boom. Screaming undead, I now get immediately another action. Now the black goat, if they've frenzied, their cultists are worth one combat. So over here right now with a, what is that thing? A fungi from Yugoth? Is that what it is? Yep. It's a weird thing. All right. They are worth uh, one combat die. And the frenzied acolyte was worth one combat die. Three skeletons are worth two combat dice. So they're actually even, except with Screaming Dead, I could, if I wanted to, immediately use Zengaya to convert one of theirs into an undead. And now it went from two versus two to him getting less power the next turn. Also, I have three combat dice and he has one combat die. So, and he's lost control of that region entirely. Huge. I, I think it's huge. I, I think um, being able to shift things like that is really good, especially for a non-combat faction. Now, of course, uh, Black Goat is a very combat-heavy faction, and Yellow Sign really isn't. So that's why they're scary to Yellow Sign, I think, because they can really, like, they just chew on you all the time. So if you can do something like this, you can slow him down. You can take away some of his power and combat dice for Black Goat. I think, I think it's underused. So uh, flipping gates, um, moving even, honestly, anywhere, right? Like anywhere you want. Um, you, you just, you have a skeleton, right? In, 
Now, I said there was some in Biaki, but nothing's a hard rule. If you had some in the skeleton, and, you know, Cthulhu is over here. Um, I, I like terrorizing black goat cultists, so um, we'll just say that. Boom, and now switch it out. Boom. It, it's great. I just love it. Um, Zingaya, it's, um, it can be hard because uh, unlike, say, dreams, right, you're not shifting power to you. You're just shifting combat dice to you. But that's, um, you are punishing that player. And that, don't, don't do it enough that you're losing. You're, you're, you're going to lose. That's, that's probably a problem. You can harass somebody. You're like, right, like I could harass uh, Shabnigarath and end up losing because the other factions are sort of running free. Don't, don't do that. Uh, yellow sign really isn't about um, taking away everybody else. It's really about desecrating. Desecrating is your key to victory, especially later on in the game, because you're going to get, um, well, you're going to have your choice, right? If, if other players are terrorizing you with their ancient ones, then you're going to bring out Hester, and when you bring out Hester, if you need to kill another Great Old Ones, you're going to uh, pull out He Who Is Not To Be Named, and He Who Is Not To Be Named, for an action cost of one, you move Hester to any area containing a cultist of any faction. I love this little note. I love this note. The cultist said his name possibly by accident. It's like, oh, what about, do you think the enemy has Hastur? Boom. It just like appears and eats them. Don't say his name. All right. So uh, immediately after he shows up, you get to take a second action, but not the Screaming Dead, right? That's what I was saying, how Yell Sign is different from the other factions, but consistently different. So you don't have to learn a bunch of different rules. It's just how they work. If you get two actions, you don't get to do another action for some sort of infinite combo. So Hester shows up. Um, you can take another action. This is, this is another mistake people make. And that is, in the beginning, you think to yourself, you have an advantage because you do not have unlimited combat. And to be honest, the other factions might. Uh, you know, at this point, with, uh, oh, this would have been out. Oh, what was it? Do, do, do. So, I have five spell books out. I don't have the last one, and the other players might. And if they do, they have unlimited combat. I don't yet. So uh, at this point, you can think to yourself, I have 10 combat dice. I am going to use my second free action for using he who is not to be named to do combat. But that's a, I think that's really usually a mistake. Um, I want to control what the other players do more than I want to win just a combat. Because here's the thing, if I showed up all by myself, then Hester is probably going to die. He costs 10 power. That sucks. I don't like it. Um, but if using he who is not to be named, I get a second free action, what if I use it to do Shriek of the Byaki? and summon all the Byaki. Chances are, Hastur is going to live, and all of them are going to die. Because I get to choose, as Hastur, how to assign pains and, and kills. Um, anything I want to die is going to die with Hastur, as a general rule. Um, and because I summoned Byaki here, which is also three combat dice, so 13 combat dice is not like a bad thing, but uh, yeah, now here's, there is a problem right now. I have two less power per turn. 
So if I could have got some cultists or some undead to float around there, that would be better. But it's worth it. I think it's worth it. I'm going to terrorize whoever it is that Hester showed up on. They're going to they're gonna know not to say his name again, but they can't help it. All right. So at this point, you know, they would have all been probably gone. And there you go. Uh, you know, next turn, if I, if I really wanted to, uh, well, one, I'd probably summon a cultist or something to take the gate. It's not, again, a yellow sign is not really about controlling gates, but I'm not going to turn them down. Uh, all right. So this would be bad. If this was a real game and I didn't have the North America or South America symbols yet, it's probably pretty crappy. you you got to take these symbols over there. Um, but then you, you know, inevitably you get a faction, uh, or you get a, you know, a desecration token in one of the two areas. And then you get your last spell book, the third eye. The yellow sign is supposed to win by getting elder signs. Cause what do you do? You know, you, you, Desecrate, desecrate North America. Boom. You have Hester out, you get an elder sign. You go over to here. Oh, desecrate it. Get an elder sign. Um, and they're cheap. It's only one power. So third eye is your late game. Like you're just going to keep getting elder signs as long as you can keep them both alive. And so... While Hastur is a threat and meant to make the other players jumpy and be like, oh no, I don't know, I don't know if he's going to kill my whatever, anything, really. Um, in reality, you kind of want Hastur just to be out and not, not too threatened. You know, I personally keep Hastur in Europe. That's the Yellow King's kind of base of power. If the other players let me have it, I just hang out there. And uh, with the Biaki and with Hastur, both having t like transportation powers, I'm fine with it. Like I'm good. Just uh, um, let's just be anywhere on the map that we want, you know. And remember to get your two, your monster that costs two or less every time you desecrate, by the way. Um, right, desecrate here, desecrate there. Everywhere you desecrate, two monster. These are not powerful creatures, but they're going to be everywhere. And you got screaming dead that you can take with you, and you're you're creating those that usually out of other people's cultists, and using uh, Zingaya. And you have Biakis that you can summon anytime you want. It's a very loose. Um, faction. You don't typically swarm. And that means your enemies constantly have to kind of hunt them down. Because if he lets you just leave Byaki all over the place, number one, you're getting power from these. Even if you don't control gates there, you're getting power. Um, because you have a unit where you have a desecration token. So you're going to get power. And number two, at any time you want, you can pull them all together. And that's too scary. Nobody can let you do that. But that's slowing them down while you're getting what you need, which is Elder Sign Tokens. That's how you win, is Elder Sign Tokens. So uh, that's that can be hard for people to grasp. I feel like, I feel like I, I don't see um, Yellow Sign players going after Elder Signs as hard as they should be. But they do get the most Elder Signs of any faction as a general rule, at least, at least in the games I play. Uh, I haven't played the sleeper, so I don't know what their deal is. Um, okay, so let's talk about the rituals of annihilation. Now, everybody else, they need rituals of annihilation to to get elder signs. Usually, like at all, right? Maybe one for their for their ancient one, not yellow sign. You're getting them every time you desecrate. So you don't need to rely on the rituals of annihilation that much except for a couple things. One, Hester's combat dice equals the current cost of a Ritual of Annihilation. Number two, 
you're going to have two great old ones, which means you're going to get more elder signs out of rituals of annihilation, right? You get one per uh, great old one that you have out. Uh, you're not going to have that much gates, though. You typically, typically, you don't have that many gates, and so it can feel kind of like, kind of like not that great of a thing to do. I think you should get, um, you should be the first to get a ritual of annihilation because it it helps your ancient one get more powerful, and in the beginning you're probably more even on gates anyways, right? Like everybody starts with one and then you're probably going to have two, maybe three, um, probably two, honestly, it's not, probably not even three by the time you could, before you reasonably could do the first um, ritual of annihilation. That's going to give you two, uh, two doom and it's going to give you, if, if it, well, no, almost guaranteed you're going to have king and yellow out. So you're going to get at least one elder sign. Uh, that's, just be the first. Be the first. It's going to bump up the cost a little bit. Uh, you know, depends on the number of players, but uh, six to seven, seven to eight, so somewhere around there. And now your Hester is just a little bit scarier. And that's, that's, that's really it. So I, I'd love to see, like, if you're a king and yellow player, what is your opener? And uh, what do you change depending on what factions you're playing against? So with that, uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. And um, let me know which faction you guys think that I should, uh, uh, I should do another video on. Uh, I'm leaning toward Jack Sothoth. Because man, I love I love Opener of the Way. I love man, I love everything about him. But Nailatotep, Crawling Chaos. I love these factions. Um, just not Black Goat. All right, guys. Until next time. Game on.